want to talk about uh, what's been going on shoot wise it is so busy out there if you were thinking oh i don't know if now is a good time to get in the film industry because i'm feeling uncertain with covid things are so uncertain if you're thinking that and that's why you're slowing down and not doing much right now you're making an enormous mistake you cannot know what it's like in the professional film industry unless you're in the professional film industry. And let me tell you, it is freaking gangbusters. Do you remember me talking about this way back in March when this all started happening? We stopped shooting for like three months. I had no work. Nobody had any work. It was illegal to shoot. They were issuing no permits. And I was saying like, oh my God, this is gonna be crazy. When we start shooting again, you guys, get ready for a tsunami of work. It's gonna be gangbusters, it's gonna be crazy. You're gonna see like overbookings, shoots on top of shoots, there won't be enough people. Do you remember me saying that? I've said that over and over again. So I said, now's the time to study. Now's the time to get ready for the tsunami of work. Because once a tsunami of work hits, which is happening right now, that's not the time to study. That's the time to actually work. So, I hope that you heeded my advice because now it's freaking gangbusters. It is a tsunami of work. I'm getting calls after calls and so are our people. We're working nonstop, very busy. Um, I have so much work. It's just, I've never, I don't think I've ever had so much work in my life. I knew it would be like this. So I have a shoot that starts tomorrow. Jennifer Aniston had a shoot yesterday, um, which was Kelly Rowland, which was awesome shot at a really cool recording studio and she sang a Christmas song. And um, that was an amazing shoot. That was a non-union shoot, which is the kind of shoots that you guys should start with. And then last week I worked with Bill Nye. So now is the time to get in the business. If you're like, oh, it feels too uncertain. I'm not sure. I, I don't know if this is a good time. Oh, now is the time. Now's the time. You should have done it a couple months ago. Like you should have found me and done work study a couple months ago because you'd be in there getting these jobs by now. Now, so many of you guys have been trying to get into this business for freaking years. And now you're, you're kind of like waiting again. Hey, should I do work study? Do fucking work study and get in the business. Let's stop waiting. Now is the time. First mistake that people make is they are trying to get into the professional industry industry through job postings. Job postings are not professional work. Backstage doesn't have all the professional work. Neither does Actors Access. Neither does, um, you know, Staff Me Up has some reality TV stuff in Detroit, but not in Los Angeles, not in New York City. All the professional work is quietly happening. Professionals hiring other professionals. You need to learn how to get into that word of mouth business. You need to learn how to get in with all these people that get to know you and will hire you. You need to create a base. And um, I'm gonna talk about that today. I've got my easel behind me and I'm gonna talk about that. But um, that's why you're here, is because you wanna know how to build a career in a word of mouth business. And you've been trying with job postings and that's leading you to student films and web series and all the non-budget stuff. And you're like, oh, there's hardly anything happening out there. You don't know all the stuff that's happening, all the professional stuff you're not meant to know about because we sign non-disclosures and those are all secret. So how do you get into this world? Well, that's what work study does. Work study gets you on small sets. You can build your experience and build your base and get good and get fast. And then that leads you onto professional sets where you're able to really start learning by observing. You're gonna learn how to know what's good. What craft, what craft do you guys do? Acting, writing, DP, editing? A lot of you guys are doing this stuff and you're good at it and you know it, you know acting, you know writing, you know. However, you don't know it to the level that you need to know it to be in demand as a professional. So you need to be on set to be around these people so that you can observe people and then you will know what's good. In fact, you will know what's outstanding. You need to know what's outstanding so that that will be your new level. Right now, you don't know because all you can do is watch Netflix and go, that per that was great, but you saw something so edited, so, so finished, it's hard to learn from that. Um, and then for your own experience, you're doing like the smaller films and the, you know, the lower budget stuff, 
And that's, you're doing the best you can, but your learning is too slow there. It can take years and you'll only reach a certain level. That's why you need to get on these sets consistently so that you can create uh, a knowledge and you can create like being there and studying and watching. Make the film set your school. You can do that. I'll teach you how to do that. And then you'll know what's good. You'll know what's good. You'll know what's outstanding as an actor. You'll know what is outstanding as a writer because you'll be right there. You'll know what's outstanding as a director. And you'll be like, oh, wow. I just learned so much just today, one day on film sets. Background, you cannot get the exposure or the understanding because your background, you're, shut, you're shuttled off to sit in your area and then you come on set and do your thing, cross, 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 and then go back to background. You're not one of us, you're not part of us. You need to become part of us. So consistent work where you're part of us. There's a lot of assistant jobs that you can get that get you working in departments that can help you tremendously with what you wanna do. So what do we need? What do we need? What, what do we need? Well, what we need to build a career is a base. A base. What? What is she talking about? A green curry paste base. We need a base. We need people to know us, to be friends with, that are professionals. We need a professional base. That's what we need is a base first. We're here. Not enough work. Wanted to get in the business. Been trying to get in the business for years. So long. Looking for job postings. Going to film festivals. Working in your film. Going to film festivals. Submitting your film. And you, you work so damn hard. 48-hour film festival. You work so damn hard. And then you talk about it to people and they're like, oh, that's nice. And they don't care. And it doesn't get you directing work. And you're like, oh, all I want to do is film. All I can think about is film. All that I love is film. If people would just give me the chance to do what I want to do. Okay? It's like so frustrating, right? Yes. Then we go to film festivals and we talk to professionals. And we're like, hey, if you ever need an actor, if you ever need this, if you ever need that. And they're like, okay, great. You're seeing really nice, really nice. But then when they think about who to hire, do they call you? The person they met at the film festival? No. They hire somebody that they worked with last week on set. Somebody that they talked to on set. That's where the brain just goes, bing. Okay, who am I gonna refer, who am I gonna refer? Somebody that I work with on set is always that. It's not somebody that you met somewhere. Even if you had a really good conversation, you went to beers with them, you like hung out with them all the time, seems like your best friends, they're not gonna refer you, they're not gonna hire you. Only if they met you on a film set. What does that mean then? What does that mean? It means you need to create a base. So you're here right now, been trying for years. Something needs to change. This is where you're going, where you're working all the time. And we want to go from here to there. Working all the freaking time, doing what you love, doing TV and feature films. That's the whole goal. You doing, you being known as an actor, being known as a director, known as a writer, known as a DP, known as a sound mixer, known as a costume designer, TV, feature films, commercials. That's where we want to go, right? Here's where we are right now, trying a bunch of stuff that never seems to work. And you're not growing enough. You're not getting enough experience where you're able to understand what's good for your craft. You're just not getting enough exposure to be able to understand and go like, oh my God, that was outstanding. And I can do this now. Bing, 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 light bulbs. Got to be around this consistently in order to get those light bulbs to go off. And that's why step number one is you have to have a base a base of experience, consistent work on professional sets. You have to have a base of people that just know you and like you as a person, not necessarily as an actor quite yet, or as a director quite yet, or as a sound mixer quite yet. When I started off, I went to film festivals. I wanted to work for National Geographic. I went to film festivals and I didn't go around passing around my card saying, hey, if you need a great sound mixer, hire me. I did not do that. I said, oh my God, I watched your film. It was so amazing. This scene was incredible. How did you shoot that? Did you, how long did it take you to get this shot and that shot? How long did this take? How much did it cost to make this thing? How did you negotiate that? It was all about them. 
They got to know me as a person. And they're like, holy shit, nobody asks these questions. Nobody watches it. Nobody's so obsessed with this. Nobody's like this Janet girl. She's crazy about wildlife filmmaking. And they're like, well, let me tell you. And the more you ask these great questions, the more they tell you and they like you as a person. Okay? So, base. People liking you as a person. And the other thing that base does, since you're on sets consistently, is you're learning so much. You're learning what is outstanding for your craft. You're seeing people that are paid $1,000 a day or more doing this consistently. You're seeing how they do it. And you're going to pick up all these little things. If you email and some, somebody and say, what should I do to be the best actor ever? They'll say, um, I don't know, do this, do this, take this, take improv class, do this, do this. But really where you're going to learn it, it cannot be something that somebody types and you go like, oh yeah. Where you're really going to learn it is by, you're going to pick it up by watching it, by being around it, by seeing the way the person breathes. You see their focus, you see their state, you see their memorization, you see their techniques, you see, you see the whole thing. I got to see Kelly Rowland yesterday. I got to really hang out with her. And I got to see this very practiced, professional, beautiful, um, you know, calm person that has trained and worked so fucking hard. I got to see that. I got so many gifts from being around her. And that's what you need to get is so many gifts from being around these people. You'll pick stuff up and this is gonna make you really good. Yes. So base, base. Okay, so with base, I'm talking about hundreds of shoots, professional shoots. I'm talking about you working on corporate video. Yeah, you can get your hands on equipment, you can help out, you can set up lights. Corporate video, uh, music videos, yeah. You can help out, you can work in the costumes, you can work in art department, music video, and maybe they'll put you in and you can act in it. That's cool. I'm talking about news. Yeah, news, That's how's that gonna get me feature films? Oh, it just gets your hands on the equipment, understanding, learning the terms, learning the drill, and practicing this person that you want to be on set. News is, I did news. It's never the end goal. We just use these shoots to get smooth and good. Base. A lot of people will stay in news their whole career. Not you, unless that's where you want to be. Okay, but you'll meet people that can teach you so much. And then you'll leave and you'll go to TV and feature film using what you learn from these people. Isn't that nice? But it's base, it's coming from your base. Hundreds of shoots, music video, corporate video, reenactments. That's great for actors. You wanna get an agent right now, right? And you can attract an agent once you're making money. And in a reenactment, do they pay actors? CNN does reenactments. Do they pay actors? Sure. Would an agent be interested in getting a percentage of that? Yes. So work on stuff that you can get paid some money as an actor. It's better than no money on student films. Agents will never be interested. You wonder, how do I get going? How do I get going? Get on these professional shoots and get put in. First, people will get to know you as a person, and then they will want to help you with their career and put you in and get you into auditions because you're working in the production office and you're like, I'd be perfect to audition for that thing. And they'll be like, sure. By the way, I just worked with Matt Lowe last week, who's somebody that I talk a lot about. I worked with Matt for years as a production assistant. And as he's working as a production assistant, he's also getting put in commercials. He's also getting auditions for commercials. How? Because he knows everybody and they love him and they know that he's an actor. So when he would go into these auditions, the producer and the director would send a little yellow post-it note down to the casting director. This is our choice. That's because they loved him. They want to see him get that role. And the cast director was like, holy shit, who is this guy who has all these connections? And that's how he got on the radar of so many casting directors. And that's how he got so many roles. And he was making money. So the agents are like, this guy is money. It's so simple. I mean, doesn't it just make sense? This is so simple. Make it simple also in your mind. Make it simple. If you make it simple, you'll be able to do it. 
if you make a complicated, but how, and how am I going to meet these people? And how, it just seems like, uh, I can't, and I can't even get a job right now. How? Don't do that. Make it simple. I need to get on these professional sets, make friends, make the space, have people know me as a person and start to get into some auditions that are professional auditions that you have to have an agent get into, but you're there. So they'll just put you in. They'll just let you in. And they will be like, oh, yay, I'm so excited. Luan is going to audition for this thing. I'm so excited to see her. They'll be so excited for you because they know you as a person. Make sense? Simple, right? So simple. So base comes first. Professional base. Professional understanding. <laughs> base. What's next? What's next? Oh, this is next. This is next. What is this? What the heck is this? <laughs> well, um... They're shallots. These are the littlest shallots that I've ever seen, and I got them at a Thai market when I went to get COVID tested for my shoot. That was yesterday. So on Saturday, I went to West Hollywood for a COVID test, and then since I was down there, I was like, hey, I'm gonna get some fish sauce. How many of you guys love fish sauce? It has another dimension to Thai food. Love fish sauce. Ooh, these smell good. And um, I, then I saw this bat. So I went to a Thai market, and then I, I bought a bunch of stuff and I bought some shallots. So I'm like, body of work, okay? What's a shallot? These, these, are, these are experiences you have. This is your body of work. Body of work is step number two. Body of work, that's step number two. So here you have a bunch of people that love you, that you're working with, that you're helping out with these assistant jobs. And then you go out and you're like, hey, I want to act. And you start to talk to people about spec shoots. And you seek out any little low budget shoot. You even go back to student films. And you'd be like, hey, I can act in that. Hey, I can shoot that. Hey, I can do second assistant camera on that web series. I'd love to do steady cam on that thing. I can do production design for you for free. Do it for free or maybe a hundred bucks. <laughs> That's pretty much free. But the thing that that does is that it gets you a body of work and something to talk about because these people here know you as an assistant, a great person, an upcoming actor, but they don't have an, enough confidence in you yet to hire you as an actor possibly or as a DP or as an AC or as a sound mixer because they've seen you working as an assistant, but they need to know that you are really an actor. So you need to go out there and act, and DP, and costume design, whatever it is that you want to do, and write. And you need to talk about it with your base. That's why it's step number two. Because you can't just say, hey, I'm an actor, but you're not acting in anything. You're not out there. You don't have headshots. You're not doing stuff. You got to do stuff. You got to build that body of work and talk about it with your base. And then they're going to go like, wow, that's cool. That's great. What else do you have coming up? Let me see it. Let me help you. And you'll find that you'll get mentors that will help you coming from your base. Okay. Body of work. For me, for this stage for me, I was like working on student films, UCLA, USC. And I was like, yeah, I've got this film I'm doing sound on. I'm doing this job. I'm doing this thing. It helped me have a body of work so that when I reached out to people, they're like, oh, she's actually already done this. She's newer, but she's done it and they hired me. I was doing like elephant relocation project. I was doing news, uh, that was documentary. I worked on the commercial and I was able to talk about it. The body of work makes you interesting and you can seek out work that is interesting to you. Maybe you're an actor and the body of work that you seek out is like travel stuff, wildlife stuff, you know, just anything, cooking stuff, anything interesting to you. It doesn't have to be like, oh, I'm going to go make my career in travel stuff. You can work in anything that's interesting to you and build up a body of work. You know why that's so important? Because people are interested in interesting stuff. Your base will be interested in you when you're able to talk about all the cool stuff you're doing. So all of my work in the Amazon, in Patagonia, working with piranhas, with great white sharks, all that stuff was very interesting to people so that I could create my, oh, you know what the next one is? my brand oh that's the honey <laughs> now you're getting into the honey 
when you're building your brand. Honey, that's your brand. Brand. Oh, this is where the money is. This is when you start making the great money. And you make money here, 200 bucks a day. Here, you make like very little money, but you're also making money this entire time. You're still working on your, with your base. And then body work, you're out there getting experience. You're talking about it with your base. So they see you, oh yeah, you are an actor. Oh yeah, you're an DP. And then they start to refer you work and you start to brand yourself. My brand is I'm a top sound mixer for commercials. Top, very busy, in demand sound mixer for commercials with a great attitude and I can do anything. Okay, I work with the biggest directors. I work on the biggest stuff. I do Super, Super Bowl stuff. That's my brand. And I'm known by thousands of people. And I'm working all the time. And I send work to a lot of people because I can't do it all. Now, your brand may be that you're an actor for feature films. Maybe you are a DP for feature films. Or you're an actor for TV stuff. So this, how long does it even take you to go from here to here? Well... When you're working, when you know that your goal is TV shows and feature films, when you start building your base, where should you be working? You work in anything you can get experience in initially, but then you really start vectoring towards TV shows and feature films, which is where you're gonna end up. That means every single shoot that you're on, you're talking to people about, hey, what else have you been working on? Who else do you work with? What other production companies do you work with? What, are kind of, what's, what have you been doing last year? What kind of shoots have been the most exciting for you? And you start to find out what other people are working on. Now notice these questions are not, not like, how do I get into TV and feature films? <laughs> I'm being dramatic just to kind of get it into your head. You're not, these questions are indirect because it's so easy for people to just say, hey, I want to be in TV and feature films. Can you get me a job in there? Millions of people that will never work in the film industry are thinking like that. Instead, what we're doing is we have a base of work, consistent shoots that we're working on, and we're talking to people about the work that's exciting to them to find out what they're doing. And then from that, you learn, oh, this production company does a lot of feature films as well. Oh, do you work over there? Yes, I do. Okay, hey, I'd love to work over there when there's a chance, you know? Because you will meet people here that do work over in these companies, feature films and TV shows. That's how I got into commercials. I found out who the main companies were. And I got referred into the, that work as well as reaching out directly because I had a really great base and body of work that I could talk about that made me different and stand out. And then these people started hiring me. And 20 years ago, so it was like my base was like maybe a year, year and a half body work that during this time and then boom the brand was created and um, went gangbusters into commercials which is very good work is that helpful let's look at the comments that's right i like what isaac's saying here um music gigs comedy shows universities these are ways to build a body of work but in addition to that you really want to get on professional sets and um, talk about this stuff. But when you get on professional sets, it's gonna be more that you're going to find spec shoots that you're gonna be able to work on. And that's gonna be, it's gonna be more professional stuff instead of like comedy shows and university stuff. Like university stuff is where a lot of people are. But once you are working in the professional world, you're gonna find spec shoots, low budget music videos, little shoots that are happening that the DP is shooting on the weekend, zero budget kind of thing, but they're professionals. And that's the kind of stuff that you really want to get on because you're working with professionals and that stuff can go somewhere. And then people know about it. Anything that's got professionals involved is so much better than like stuff that like, you know, like comedy shows that's not connected into the professional film industry. Does that make sense? So it really starts here. This base is super, super important. Still, you're very creative, Isaac, and you built a body of work.
that is um, fantastic. And so what you need to start to start with now is having a base and then talk about what you've already done, which is very interesting and cool. And a lot of these people in your base will have known it. Oh my God, I love that show. And then in addition to that, start building, addition, adding to your body of work in the professional world, low budget professional stuff. Make sense? Well, this is what I wanted to tell you guys today. Um, have a great day. Um, we're actually having a little party today here in my house. And we're all going to be wearing masks. It's Omar's birthday tomorrow. So we're going to have pizza. We're going to have a cake. And we're going to celebrate Omar's birthday. The whole Friends and Film team is coming over with masks. We're going to be outside, uh, distanced apart. Uh, and we're going to safely have a little get-together. Well, we're working here anyway, so um, Omar's always here. Hanlu's always here, and Greg is, comes quite often too. So those are the three people that come to this house to work Monday through Friday. And then Nicole, who answers our emails, is coming in today for this meeting as well. So yeah, we're going to have fun today, working, eating, outside, safely. And then tomorrow, Jennifer Aniston with Jennifer Aniston for the next couple days. All right, guys. Well, have a great day. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.